linear motion is used to being the life of the party, but the universe is full of spinning objects that are often overlooked and are jam-packed with crazy surprises. This handle on the International Space Station isn't drunk. It's exhibiting the Jana Bekov effect, which you can also refer to as the tennis racket effect in case you are currently drunk and can't say Jana Bekov. This phenomenon is observed when a spinning object such as a satellite or a gyroscope changes its orientation in space. Gyroscopic precession causes the axis of rotation to change direction, and when the spinning object is not symmetric, the precession can also cause the object to flip over. You may have noticed this if you've ever played around by tossing your phone. If you try to flip it like this, it's really hard to just spin it in the long direction without it also beginning to rotate. The more forcefully you flip your phone, the harder it is to stop it from spinning. This spin is caused by the difference in the inertia of different parts of the spinning object. When the object changes orientation, the parts with different inertia experience different forces which can cause the object to flip over. Regular spin can get pretty insane too. A bullet fired from a rifle barrel can spin at a blinding rate of up to 300,000 times per minute. The rifled barrel has grooves cut into the inside of the barrel and these grooves cause the bullet to spin as it's fired. The spinning motion imparts a gyroscopic stability to the bullet much like a spinning top or a football, which helps to keep the bullet on a straight path as it travels through the air. The spinning motion causes the air around it to move in a circular motion, which creates an area of low pressure behind the bullet, reducing drag and allowing it to travel farther and with greater accuracy. The Earth spins on an axis that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole. This rotation is what causes day and night, but it's not a simple constant motion. The axis of the Earth also processes or wobbles like a top. This axial precession completes a full rotation about every 26,000 years. This makes the position of the North Star in the sky change over time, as it has in the past and will in the future. This precession is caused by the gravitational pull of the Moon and the Sun on the Earth's equatorial bulge. The Earth's tilted rotation at an angle of 23.5 degrees causes the change of the seasons and the rotation of the Earth in general has a profound effect on our weather. The spinning causes the jet stream, which helps to steer weather systems around the globe, the Coriolis effect, which causes air and water to rotate and move in different directions at different latitudes, influencing the formation of hurricanes, tornadoes, and ocean currents. The spin of our planet affects the distribution distribution of its mass, with more mass concentrated at the equator due to centrifugal force. If you stand at the equator, you will actually weigh less than you do at the poles, about half a pound less, although this is mostly due to being farther away from the center of Earth's mass due to the bold shape, rather than any direct effect from centrifugal force. Turning our focus to outer space, neutron stars are incredibly dense, incredibly small, and incredibly fast-spinning celestial bodies. They are formed when massive stars run out of fuel, collapse in on themselves, and explode in a supernova. The outer layers of the star are blown away, leaving behind a dense core that is only about 20 kilometers in diameter, but has a mass greater than the Sun. One of the most fascinating properties of neutron stars is their incredible speed of rotation caused by the conservation of angular momentum. The original star that collapsed to form the neutron star was already spinning, and just like an ice skater pulling their arms in to spin faster, the angular momentum of the original star's rotation was amplified as it shrank. Except this was on a massive scale, so this had an extreme effect on the rotation we see in neutron stars. The fastest known neutron star is PSR J1748-2446 AD, which I like to call Dizzy J for short. Dizzy J spins a staggering 716 times per second, which is 161,061,742 miles per hour, or 24% the speed of light. Needless to say, Dizzy J is pretty dizzy. Some neutron stars, known as pulsars, emit beams of radiation that sweep across space as the star rotates. These beams of radiation are detected as regular pulses on Earth and are incredibly regular, with some pulsars emitting pulses that are accurate to within a few microseconds. Some pulsars have been discovered that are more accurate at keeping time than our best atomic clocks. Pulsars can be extremely useful to us since the pulses can be used to measure the position with great accuracy, and stellar navigation technology can use their X-ray emissions just like GPS systems use satellites, resulting in extremely useful navigation tools. We might eventually even be able to use measurements from them to build extremely large gravitational wave detectors, vastly enhancing our ability to understand ripples in the very fabric of space-time itself. It makes sense that when a neutron star is big enough to continue collapsing all the way down into a black hole that this conservation of angular momentum would be increased even more, and that's exactly what happens. Quasars are extremely luminous active galactic nuclei created by supermassive black holes. They are the brightest objects in the universe and can emit more energy than the entire 
entire galaxy in which they reside. The intense energy emitted by quasars is generated by the actual material, the gas and dust that is being pulled into the black hole, creating the accretion disk. The material in the accretion disk can move at incredibly high speeds, some reaching up to 70% the speed of light. This material heats up as it approaches the black hole, leading to temperatures in the millions of degrees. This heat generates the intense energy that is emitted by quasars, creating the brightest blast of photons in the universe. The ergosphere of a black hole is a region that surrounds the event horizon, and the event horizon is the point of no return, the point where the gravitational pull of the black hole is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. The ergosphere, however, is not a point of no return, but it is a region where the laws of physics are drastically different from those of the outside universe. Black holes in general have so much angular momentum that they can nearly break our brains trying to comprehend them. And in the ergosphere, a bizarre effect called frame dragging takes place. Frame dragging is the effect of a rotating object's gravity on the space-time around it. In the ergosphere, this effect is so strong that it causes the actual fabric of space-time to rotate along with the black hole. This means that anything that enters the ergosphere must rotate along with the space-time, and it is impossible for anything to remain stationary within it. Even if an object moved at the speed of light in the opposite direction of the rotation, it still wouldn't be fast enough to not move in the direction of rotation from our perspective. This results in something that should seemingly not be possible. In the ergosphere, from our perspective on the outside, objects can move faster than light. This is possible because the objects aren't technically breaking the cosmic speed limit because from their own frame of reference, they aren't actually moving faster than light. But from our view on the outside, they are. The extreme time dilation that objects in this zone experience from the intense gravity of the black hole causes those objects to experience time as passing much more slowly than it does for us. So to them, they aren't moving nearly as fast. Likewise, if you could somehow look out at the Earth from within the ergosphere, you would see everything moving really fast, the lives of everyone you know flashing by in an instant while you continue to age normally from your perspective. It's this sort of workaround that some hypothesize could one day lead us to develop a warp drive. By somehow creating a bubble of moving space-time surrounding a ship, maybe we could use this frame dragging as a sort of cheat code to move faster than light while still technically not breaking any laws. Now all we need is someone to come up with an idea on how we could possibly move space-time, which doesn't exactly make this problem any easier to solve. So where is the actual fastest spinning object in the universe from everyone's perspective? You might expect to find it deep in outer space inside some alien realm, but you would be disappointed unless you consider Indiana to be an alien realm. Scientists at Purdue University have created the fastest spinning object ever recorded. A microscopic silica ball was hit with two different lasers in a vacuum, which created a spin and also levitated the ball in midair, avoiding any friction that would be caused by allowing it to touch surfaces. This man-made object spun at an incredible 300 billion times per second, faster than anything else in the known universe. This blinding speed started to challenge the laws of physics as we previously knew them. In a vacuum, it was expected that the ball wouldn't create any friction. The air was removed, it wasn't touching any surfaces, so what is there to create friction against in the first place? But there was friction. This friction wasn't from the air, but was instead caused by the uncertainty principle. In empty space, virtual particles simply pop in and out of existence due to quantum fluctuations, so a vacuum is never really empty. This experiment was done to see whether vacuum friction might exist, and the results show that it actually does. Something can't spin forever, despite Newton's laws. The speed of 300 billion RPM is hard for us humans to even grasp, but it's yet another surprising record that our species holds. Just as the fastest spinning object anywhere in the universe was right here on Earth, the coldest objects in the universe have been tiny pieces of metal cryogenically cooled right here on Earth, and the hottest things in the universe have been particles smashed together at extreme speeds in the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. So until someone actually invents a warp drive, we may be stuck here in our solar system, but that doesn't stop us from smashing records.